In this video, Tesla have leaked some juicy new information about their autonomous software, aka FSD Beta, and the implications are profound, whether you're a Tesla stock investor or a curious observer. By providing this information, Tesla has effectively exposed themselves to the world. We have real tangible numbers describing Tesla's rate of progress. One more time, we now have tangible information describing Tesla's rate of progress in the pursuit of solving the enormously challenging problem of autonomy. And fair warning, Make sure you're sitting down for this. Let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can get two free stocks with Weeble, a free stock with Stake, free Bitcoin with Coinbase, and free Bitcoin with BlockFi, and the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos Videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. So FSD beta version 10.11 has been released. Whole Mars nutting left, right, and center over the release notes. Next minute, Andre Kapathy, who is leading Tesla's FSD efforts, retweets and shares his favorite change in the update. And this is no ordinary update. So we're gonna be running through point by point all of the changes and discussing the implications and look at the stunning rate of progress Tesla is making. We can see Andre Kapathy really proud of one of the changes in particular in this release. And that is the change from modeling lane geometry as a bag of points. We'll talk more about this in a moment to vector space. So let's run through the release notes for FSD beta 10.11 I'll share my thoughts and commentary along the way. Number one, upgraded modeling of lane geometry from dense rasters, bag of points, this is what Andre Kapathy is most proud of, to an autoregressive decoder that directly predicts and connects vector space lanes point by point using a transformer neural network. And what does this do? This enables us to predict crossing lanes, allows computationally cheaper and less error-prone post-processing and paves the way for predicting many other signals and their relationships jointly and end to end. Sounds super jargony, but the good news is Andre Kapathy actually explained this exact change in great detail at Tesla's AI Day. Let's listen to Andre discussing this very change a few months ago. We very quickly discovered that the image space is not the correct output space. Uh, you don't want to make predictions in image space, you really want to make it directly in the vector space. So here's a way of illustrating the issue. So here I'm showing on the first row the predictions of our curbs and our lines in red and blue. And uh, they look great in the image, but once you cast them out into the vector space, things start to look really terrible and we are not gonna be able to drive on this. Okay, so if you look on screen now, you can see the visualization. This is the so-called bag of points, the old way. So you see how the predictions are quite bad in vector space. And the reason for this fundamentally is because you need to have an extremely accurate depth per pixel in order to actually do this projection. And so you can imagine just how high of a bar it is to predict that depth so accurately in these tiny, in every single pixel of the image. And also if there's any occluded area where you'd like to make predictions, you will not be able to because it's not an image uh, space uh, concept in that case. All right, stick with us folks. It gets a little bit nerdy over the next 60 seconds, but after that you'll really see things come together. Perfect explanation of why this is such a profoundly important change. So we have this intuition that what we'd like to do instead is we'd like to take all of the images and simultaneously feed them into a single neural net and directly output in vector space. Now this is very easily said, much more difficult to, to actually achieve. If you want vector space predictions from your neural net, you need vector space data sets. So just labeling and images and so on is not going to get you there. You need vector space labels. The problem is that this projection is really hard to actually get correct because it is a function of the road surface. The road surface could be sloping up or sloping down, or also there could be other data dependent issues. For example, there could be occlusion due to a car. So if there's a car occluding this, this uh, viewport, this, this part of the image, then actually you may want to pay attention to a different part of the image, uh, not the part where it projects. And so because this is data dependent, it's really hard to have a fixed transformation for this uh, component. If you do all of the engineering correctly, this again is very easily said, uh, difficult to do, you do all of the engineering correctly. Here are some of the results. So on the left, we are seeing what we had before, and on the right, we're now seeing significantly improved predictions coming directly out of the neural net. This is a multi-camera network predicting directly in vector space, and you can see that it's basically night and day. Uh, you can actually drive on this. 
And uh, this took some time and some engineering and incredible work from the AI team uh, to actually get this to work and deploy and make it efficient in the car. Well, as you guys and girls saw on screen, the difference night and day, this is a huge change. Capabilities and the precision of full self-driving beta will improve enormously as a result of this change. Just think about it, right? This refers to the modeling of lane geometry. If you're a car, lane geometry is your entire fucking world. Tesla's AI is now becoming more capable of accurately modeling its world. Number two, use more accurate predictions of where vehicles are turning or merging to reduce unnecessary slowdowns for vehicles that will not cross our path. Now, I know this sounds simple on the surface, but just keep in mind the end result of Tesla's development of this autonomous software will ultimately be artificial general intelligence. This is no longer a secret plan either. Elon Musk has been public about this. When we're talking about more accurate predictions, we are talking about intelligence here. The more accurate your predictions, I think it's fair to say, the more intelligent you are, at least in some narrow sense. So pay attention to this kind of terminology relating to perception, planning, action, predictions, and so on. Various expressions of intelligence. Number three, improved right of way understanding. There, another word relating to intelligence, understanding. If the map is inaccurate or the car cannot follow the navigation. In particular, modeling intersection extents is now entirely based on network predictions and no longer uses map-based heuristics. To translate the jargon, this simply means that Tesla is no longer reliant upon maps to know, oh, there should be an intersection here, there's a road here. None of that matters. You know why? Because Tesla's vision is now intelligent enough to perceive for the first time freshly what it is seeing at an intersection. It doesn't need to know what's there, how many, no, 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 it doesn't need any of that. The car is intelligent enough to, for the very first time, encounter this situation, this intersection, go, okay, that's this, that, okay, cool, no problems. This is a critically important juncture. Tesla again, swinging around their gigantic engineering lead. They ditched radar because their vision was so good, radar was actually making the perception worse and more dangerous. We're now seeing Tesla ditching low resolution maps and we're not talking about maps showing what's exactly everywhere. It's just very general stuff. There's a light, traffic light here, traffic light here, this intersection, there's a lane here, that kind of stuff, just really low resolution stuff. So the vehicle kind of knows where it's going. But we're now talking about a vehicle that's so smart it can figure stuff out without needing any of that underlying information. Intelligence. Number four, improve the precision of VRU detections by 44.9%. First up, VRU, vulnerable road user, in other words, pedestrian, cyclist, etc. The kind of people, things on the road and nearby the road that you, under no circumstances, are to collide with, ever. This is something that Tesla's engineers have tuned their vehicles to be extremely cautious, conservative, and ultra safe about. So improving precision here means a lot less phantom braking. Now, let me ask a question here. 44.9%. We are again talking about intelligence, perception, and action, right? How many people watching this video got 44.9%, almost 50% better at anything in, say, the last 12 months? Let me know in the comments below. This is insane and it's an extremely compelling data point about the rate of progress here. Again, we are talking about intelligence. Tesla's vision in this particular domain, detecting bikes, pedestrians, etc., got about 50% better, aka about 50% more intelligent. This is nuts. The result, dramatically reducing spurious false positive pedestrians and bicycles, especially around tar seams, skid marks, and raindrops. This was accomplished by increasing the data size of the next gen auto labeler. Again, when you see the name auto labeler as a Tesla stock investor, think money. Shout out to Operation Vacation. Training network parameters that were previously frozen and modifying the network loss functions. We find that this decreases the incidence of VRU related false slowdown, aka phantom braking. Number five, reduce the predicted velocity error or very close by motorcycles, scooters, wheelchairs, and pedestrians by 63.6%. Once again, we have an explicit number, data describing Tesla's progress, the improvement, how much better their system is getting. I really wanna drive this point home. We're looking at multi double digit percentage improvements here. If you haven't figured out the punchline, I'll give you a clue. Look into the future. Number six, creeping jerk. Wait, what? I must be high. Improve creeping profile with higher jerk when creeping starts. Uh, let's move on. Number seven, improve control for nearby obstacles by predicting, again, another descriptor of intelligence by predicting continuous distance to static geometry with the general static obstacle network. Again, just to translate the jargon, Tesla's static obstacle network is continuously predicting the distance between the vehicle and objects in the surrounding environment as it moves through space, and this has improved. Number eight, reduced vehicle parked attribute error rate. In other words, the car, the system thinking that vehicle's parked when in fact it isn't, it's an active road user, by 17% achieved by increasing the data set by 14%. Now, hold up a second here. 
It sounds based on this description, but this improvement was merely automatic, the result of expanding Tesla's data set. Well, guess what happens? The more Tesla vehicles on roads, the more data, and if there's more data, we might see continual improvement in these types of things in the future. We've also learned about an interesting relationship here, error rate down 17% with the addition of 14% more data. Imagine what might happen if Tesla has 100% more data, or wait for it, 1000% more data. Something to think about. Number nine. Improved clear to go scenario velocity error by 5% and highway scenario velocity error by 10% achieved by tuning loss function targeted at improving performance in difficult scenarios. 10. Improved detection and control for open car doors. 11. Improved smoothness. Now notice, improved, improved, improved. Again, look into the future. What's the trend? Improvement. Improved smoothness through turns by using an optimization based approach to detect which road lines are irrelevant for control given lateral and longitudinal acceleration and jerk limits as well as vehicle kinematics. Sometimes you might have noticed in some of the footage of FSD beta the vehicle sometimes a bit jerky or it freaks out, there's lanes merging, these kind of things, it gets a bit jittery, it just doesn't quite know what to do. An explanation for why this would happen in some cases would be the system getting confused and seeing a lane line, a marker somewhere that isn't relevant to the actual vehicle, maybe on the opposite side of the road or something, but not having disregarded them, much like you and I are subconsciously doing as we drive a vehicle. Tesla AI now is doing the same thing. In the background, determining these are the relevant lane markers to me. This is where I am and where I'm going. Everything else completely irrelevant so I can ignore it. And number 12, improve stability of the FSD user interface visualizations by optimizing the ethernet data transfer pipeline by 15%. Now I know this is a super nerdy video, but if you're a Tesla stock investor in particular, I think it's so important to do your best to understand everything that's going on at this company. An FSD beta version 10.11 is a significant update with a trove of new tangible information that we as Tesla stock investors can integrate into our mental models. We've got a bunch of incredibly insightful data that we can use to extrapolate into the future. This can give us hints about the rate of progress Tesla's making. More important than that, we can also learn things like mistakes, errors, dead ends Tesla has learned no longer make sense. One of the reasons this matters so much is in giving us insights into how far ahead Tesla is of every other company on the planet attempting to solve autonomy. The truth is I think most companies today don't even have a plan of solving general autonomy. Autonomy. They're forever planning to use LiDAR and HD maps and geofence their vehicles, which isn't really autonomy, it's just memorization. Remember, Tesla solves autonomy, robo-taxis awaken, Tesla starts printing truly obscene amounts of money. With a problem as difficult to solve as autonomy, for Tesla to publish information about the exact amount of improvement in different areas of this software is a gift. Remember, when the robo-taxis awaken, it's game f***ing over. As a Tesla stock investor, here's what I'm focused on. The end destination, artificial general intelligence, the interim step, the Tesla bot, and the precursor, Tesla's full self-driving software. I highly advise every investor in Tesla stock who's watching to pay very close attention to what's happening on this path. It starts with FSD, transitions to a form of general intelligence in Tesla spot, and then eventually to artificial general intelligence. It's as smart or smarter as a human being across a broad range of things. It won't just smoke you at go or chess. It'll smoke you at everything and then steal your girlfriend. I always love to ask, so let me know in the comments below, when do you think the first robo taxi fare will take place in a Tesla somewhere on planet Earth? And just finally, don't forget, if you'd like to support the channel, click the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment to join Patreon and you'll instantly gain access to my Tesla stock price targets, bear case, base case, bull case, and hyper bull case all the way out over the next decade. And you'll also gain access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of other exclusive content and perks. So I'll see you over there. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can get two free stocks with Weeble, a free stock with Stake, free Bitcoin with Coinbase, and free Bitcoin with BlockFi, and the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below, and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel, and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.